Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, May 29th, 2024. And once again, on these Wednesdays, we have with us a man of freedom, peace, and justice, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, all things that have been stolen from us, Judge Andrew Napolitano. And uh, yeah, I'm laughing about it. It was very sad. Uh, Judge, thanks for being here. Oh, and- thanks for having me on the show, Gerald. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Again, I'm honored, and uh, everybody else listening should also be, because what the judge brings forth, very, very few people do, and the ones that do do not have the background knowledge and facts that the judge puts out when it comes to the Bill of Rights and Constitution that have been stolen from us. And the article that's coming out tomorrow really says it. American Caesar and the constitutional indifferences. Well, um, the article uh, paints the picture that Congress has uh, intentionally looked the other way when presidents have grabbed power and that Congress has given presidents the power to do things which are absolutely prohibited under the Constitution. It started right at the birth of the country uh, with George Washington, with the first national bank, which eventually became the Federal Reserve, uh, with the Insurrection Act, which is still around, and which allows the president to commandeer troops to enforce uh, uh, domestic laws and to quell uh, domestic uh, issues, to put troops in the streets if he doesn't like uh, what's happening uh, in the streets. And the Alien and Sedition Act, which uh, made certain speech uh, a crime, that's been reborn as the Espionage Act of 1917 and the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act (laughs) of 2024. Um, in between Washington and Biden, there's a long litany of presidential uh, excesses, all of which make the president uh, an American Caesar. Uh, he can confiscate bank accounts. He can close the Internet. He can shut down uh, federal highways. He can steal uh, property. Uh, all of these things that Congress has allowed uh, the president to do because Congress doesn't care about the Constitution and the presidents don't care about the Constitution. What prompted me to write this was a fascinating piece in The Economist magazine, which might have been aimed at Donald Trump, I'm not sure. It was a pretty fair piece called, Is America Dictator Proof? (laughs) And The Economist concludes that America is not dictator proof and I come to the same Conclusion, and in my piece, I list uh, a lot of things in there that presidents have done. They basically have declared emergencies and then claimed that they have more power during the emergency than they had before the emergency. The last time the Supreme Court looked at this, they said it was hogwash, that there is no such thing as emergency power, and the Constitution applies in bad times as well uh, as in good. So, for example, Joe Biden, I don't even know if the public knows this, declared an emergency two months ago. And the emergency was that former college students hadn't yet repaid their debts. And he was seizing power to forgive those debts. Now, when the government gives a debt, the government ends up paying the debt to the bank. The bank loans the money. The government guarantees the debt if the money is used for uh, college purposes. When the money is not paid back, the government's on the hook. Supreme Court said to the president, you can't do this. Only Congress can do it. Did it anyway by declaring it an emergency. Um, Tony Blinken, the secretary of state, before Congress voted to send $20 billion to the Israeli government, declared it an American emergency that the uh, Israel, uh, uh, Israeli defense forces were slaughtering innocent Gazans and therefore under emergency power, which doesn't exist, the government could send money to Israel before Congress voted on it. So this stuff is not just theoretical. It happens right under our noses. It happens all the time. It happens so frequently, we don't even pay attention to it. You know, you, you say, um, you know, in many things that you're saying, but you were talking about you know, the, this uh, forgiveness of uh, student loans and you say the government has to pay the debt. No, the taxpayers have to pay the debt. Correct. Correct. And that and Usually future taxpayers, because the government doesn't have 
the cash it has already spent our tax dollars so it has to borrow money in our name yeah and they'll never pay back the principal they never do the principal that's owed now is up to 35 trillion yep. the government just rolls it over yeah every hundred days they're adding another trillion dollars to the debt level the, and you have you're right here today there are around 135 of these largely unknown to the public statutes that permit the president as you were mentioning to close federal highways confiscate bank accounts in federally insured banks and shut down the internet all to address a self-willed emergency all without due process all in defiance of basic constitutional norms that's where we are today i could have added a, a, another all all without any complaint in the media or awareness of the American public because this stuff happens uh, so many times. I remember once when I was at Fox, I was interviewing Charlie Rangel, the real character of a congressman from uh, Harlem. And during the interview, the news broke that Barack Obama had authorized the CIA to bomb Libya. So I said to him, I said, you know, you, you can't you, you can't possibly approve of this. He's starting a war against uh, Libya that we have no beef uh, with Libya. Uh, only Congress can declare war. And Wrangell said, ah, let him do it. Let him do it. If we get rid of Gaddafi, that's a good thing. If it explodes in Obama's face, then Congress is off the hook. You can't blame us. Well, what kind of fidelity to the Constitution is that? That's an example of how Congress thinks when presidents do these excessive things. And because Obama got away with that, Trump was able to kill General Soleimani. Trump was able to declare an emergency at the Texas-Mexico border and build his fence, his border wall, even though Congress had refused to fund it. Trump took money from the Treasury without congressional authorization. Every time this stuff happens, it makes it easier for a succeeding president to do something similar or even more outrageous. You mentioned this clown guy that you interviewed was Wrangle saying, Obama, you know, it's the best to get rid of Gaddafi. Well, that's because Hillary Clinton. What did she say? We came, we saw, he died. He died. Some, he, yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Uh, absurdly immoral uh, comment. Uh, she wanted to be the liberator of um, uh, Libya. Liberator? It was a prosperous, happy country, the likes of which Africa uh, had never seen. It's now a disaster. Yep. And I'll never forget, I, I remember it well. Uh, <laughs> I call Obama the Nobel Peace a crap prize winner. And uh, you know, he won the Nobel Peace Prize right after he won it. We had the African, the uh, Afghan troop surge. And then, of course, Gaddafi has to go. And I'll never forget, he gave his speech at, you know, someplace in D.C. of, you know, military graduates or something. And then he, his wife and his mother or mother-in-law, I forget, took a trip to Rio de Janeiro, got on the plane, waved goodbye. And this whole thing, Gaddafi has to go. Gaddafi has to go. It was brought to you by Sarkozy in France, a little piece of scum Cameron that was the prime minister of the UK that's now the foreign minister, it's wanting to keep sending more and more weapons to, to both Israel and, and Ukraine to keep slaughtering people, that guy. Right. And the three women behind it, Samantha Power, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton. I'm mentioning this because I keep hearing this crap, this bullshit, that if only women were in charge, things no. would be so different. They got a they got a murderous track record. You just keep looking at them. Oh, you forgot about Condoleezza Rice, the next mushroom cloud you see? How about that Baerbach and Vanderlyn over there in the UK? 
warmongering little freaks. How about um, Madeleine Albright? Five hundred thousand children dead uh, is a good is a small price to pay. Pay for what? Yeah, she asked. Uh, she was on with Leslie Stahl on sixty minutes, and Leslie right. Stahl asked her, "Is the price of five hundred thousand Iraqi children under the age of five worth what Clinton has done?" And she said, "Yes, it is." Mm. So going no, these back, are sick, these are sick people who will rise to power uh, in the United States and um, don't care about the laws, don't care about the Constitution, don't care about the lat natural law, don't care about morality, don't care about the right to live. And exactly that's the point that I wanted to make with what you're writing about. It's politicians in a country near you. Look around the world at the freak show and the freaks that are telling people what to do. Making up this crap. Screw the Constitution. You know, there's one of our covers, democracy. You know, you'll, you'll, it's not a democracy. You know, it's, it's an idiot's delight. And, but think about this, Judge. Everything that you wrote and all these things that they've, you know, we, we can do anything that we want. I'm the politician in power. I'll tell you what to do. The public doesn't mean anything, only the people in power. You know, to me, this is, it's inhumanity. Well, politicians, um, you know, do what they can get away with. They do what they think is politically popular in order to stay in power. They don't care about the laws. They don't care about uh, the Constitution. I mean, Justice Scalia used to say from the bench, I don't care what a politician says about a piece of legislation when he votes for it. There's only one reason he votes for it. There's only one reason he or she does anything, and that's to get reelected. But think about this. this we give all our life and livelihood to, to the country, and these people just steal our rights from us day in and day out. Yes. I mean, it's, it, 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 remember the COVID war? Stand six feet apart. Put on a mask. You know, uh, don't, when you're in an airplane, you better put that mask on. But when you're eating and drinking, you take it off. And, and if you don't believe what we tell you, you believe in misinformation. And blacklisted, destroyed. What they did to people like Dr. Joseph Mercola and others. I mean, what, what's going on in this country is only going to get worse. Yes. And I don't know what the uh, what the answer is. It's it's certainly not Biden or Trump. And, and under either of them, it would continue uh, to get worse <clears throat> in terms of the flow of power to Washington and the exercise of raw power unconstrained uh, by the Constitution or by the courts. You know, and and again, you know, it, it's a. One of my sayings is when all else fails, they take you to war. These are power hungry people. And World War Three, you know, we forecast this back in February 22nd, 2022, two years before the Ukraine war started. We're going from the COVID war to Ukraine war to World War. And here's the cover. And um, World War Three has begun and it's just escalating. And what's happening in uh, the genocide being committed by uh, Israel. And you mentioned in your article here about, you know, the American Caesar and what they're doing to us. And one of the, 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 uh, the acts that you mentioned is this one that they just made up about this anti-Semitism. Well, the anti-Semitism that has not passed the Senate yet, so it certainly hasn't been signed uh, by the president, but this defines anti-Semitism as anything critical of the Jewish people. Uh, and it says if any school permits anti-Semitic uh, speech to the school without due process, without a trial, without proof, uh, can be subject to a bureaucratic determination that the federal aid to that school is gone. Uh, so there are two problems here. One is the uh, confiscation of wealth. 
candidly, wealth that shouldn't even be delivered. The government has no business funding schools, but it does. Uh, and the second, of course, is the suppression of, of speech. I mean, suppose you attack the Italian government. No, you're not going to be punished. You shouldn't be punished for attacking any government. You have the right to say what you want about any government. You know, this this war is just keeps heating up. And again, like you said, you're not allowed to condemn it. White House signals Rafah strike does not cross red line. The White House on Tuesday indicated an Israeli strike that killed dozens of Palestinians. What dozens of Palestinians? It killed over 50 and wounded about 250. Did not cross a red line that would lead to a change in U.S. policy. This is that little clown, arrogant, arrogant piece of scum, John Kirby. Quote, we still don't believe that a major ground operation in Rafah is warranted. We still don't want to see the Israelis, as we say, smash into Rafah with large units over large pieces of territory. We still believe that, and we haven't seen that at this point. What, are you blind? You haven't seen this at this point? Who are you talking to? Oh, I'm talking to the prostitutes, the little media boys and girls that put out for their government whoremasters and corporate pimps. That's who I'm talking to. <laughs> he uh, he takes the American public to be uh, idiots when he is, of course, he's a Baghdad Bob. He's a fool uh, himself who has no sense of right or wrong or no sense of morality. He's just a mouthpiece for uh, an immoral uh, uh, government that is funding genocide. And where's the outrage? There's no out. Well, there's outrage by you, by me, by a small group of us, but not by the American public no. and by the, the college students whom Donald Trump said he will deport, even though many of them are Americans. He will deport them uh, if college students dare demonstrate against his uh, foreign policy while he's uh, president. There it is, right from The Guardian. Trump tells donors he will crush pro Palestinian protests if reelected. There you go. May 27th. I guess he. If you get me reelected. The First Amendment. If you get me reelected, we're going to we're going to set that movement back 25 or 30 years. The former president and presumptive Republican nominee called the demonstrations against Israel's war in Gaza, quote, a radical revolution promised the predominantly Jewish donors that he would set the movement back 25 or 30 years if they helped him beat Joe Biden in November. He praised New York police for clearing the encampments at Columbia University. There was no violence on the Columbia campus until the police arrived. Yep. And again, you know, not only that, you know, I say this judge and I it, 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 yeah. Where are, where are all of the religions? How come they're not out there where the Quakers died in an earthquake? The Seventh day Adventists waiting for the eighth day? Where are all the, where are all the religions that believe in God? Where are the leaders of these religions and all of them? Where are they? Not a peep about peace. Right. Right. You talk more about uh, peace than any major uh, religious leaders do, including the Pope. Yeah. You know, Jane, uh, who you know, is my, my, the Iowa executive assistant here, and she goes to church every, every week. And her priest said, let's all pray for Israel. Oh, gosh. And I got, we're losing subscribers, not a lot. Here's a here's a here's a one that just came in. The guy said to me, uh, they said, please stop my monthly payments to trends. You are too anti-Israel in your opinion. I wrote back, no, you got it wrong. Not an opinion. Yes, I am anti-Israeli genocide by the facts, not an opinion. 
and not an opinion by the facts. I am anti-Israel that keeps stealing Palestinian land in violation of the Geneva Convention and UN Article 242. I said, you are too pro-Israeli in your, quote, opinion. <laughs> well, you know, whenever you uh, speak a hard truth, there are haters out there, and uh, we know that. We both know that. But again, this goes back to that anti-Semitism law that they're pushing through. Correct. It's okay for Israel to keep stealing all the land that they want. And they use this BS word called settlers. They're invaders. Invaders. So this is, this is going to, they're not going to stop. Netanyahu, you know, I remember when this began back in October of 2023 after the Hamas attack. And I'll never forget, you said to me, one of your people that you, you interviewed said, you know, they're going to get, you know, this is going to really hurt Netanyahu. Here we are, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, going into June, eight months. He's still in power. He's more powerful than ever, but he knows that the minute he's out of power, he's cooked, which is why he'll extend this war as long as he can. Exactly. Perfectly said, because they're going to keep ramping up this war and they're going to keep ramping up the Ukraine war and they're ramping up World War III. And if we don't have peace on earth, it's going to be hell on earth. You know, I, I was at a party and a woman started getting in an a, a argument with me and she kept interrupting me. And I said, I, I don't want to talk with about this anymore. I'm Polish, but I'm an American too. And it's America should be there supporting. I said, this has been going on since Catherine the Great between Ukraine and, <laughs> right. and Russia. I said, it's not America's duty to be involved in this. Once upon a time, there was a man by the name of George Washington who said, don't become involved in foreign entanglements. This stuff has been going on for centuries and we're not going to fix it. Don't love a nation, don't hate a nation because if you do to either one, you're a slave to them. It's your duty to... to be I said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Wow. We have no right being involved in these things. Yes. Yeah, but this lady is um, brainwashed by the government and by the press, which keeps uh, preaching the virtues of American involvement and hatred for Putin. And uh, it's going to be one of the great uh, foreign policy disasters of all time. Joe Biden just hopes to keep uh, the cork in the bottle, so to speak, until after Election Day. Who do you think is going to win the election? Well, right now it appears that Trump would win, but I mean, anything can happen in the next six months. I'm not so sure Trump would be any better at all. He was, oh. certainly wouldn't be better in Israel. Um, but right now it appears as though it's it's Trump's to lose. Oh, did you hear Trump came out and you also said he would have bombed Moscow? Oh, God. Yeah. The Washington Post put out a story. Well, if he said that, he's crazy. Well, he's crazy anyway. If he, if he said it, it didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever wins, we lose. It goes back to your article. And everybody needs to read this. We have dictators in charge, Caesars. No matter who wins this election, as I see it, we the people lose. Because this is going to divide America terribly. Yeah, very sad. Judge, thank you for being on. Everybody go to Judging Freedom. You got to see the guests that he has on. And Phil Giraldi, Scott Ritter, uh, uh, Colonel McGregor. Who's coming on next? Uh, McGregor was on yesterday, and in less than 24 hours, that's 300,000 uh, views. Giraldi's on today. Phil's on at uh, 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon. He keeps uncovering more and more insidious relationships between the government of Israel and the government of the United States. Yeah. Um, and two young guys uh, are on Connor Freeman of antiwar.com and Aaron Mate, uh, who uh, has just been eviscerating 
Biden and Netanyahu with his writings. He also, going back to Giraldi, we published his article uh, in this week's Trends Journal as well. Yeah, uh, no, that article's uh, yeah, fabulous about about the, uh, the the Jewish control of the United States, basically. Right. As he keeps uncovering. And what did Colonel McGregor have to talk about? What was the, the that uh, Israel, as we know it, might not last uh, very much longer because the uh, the world is fed up with them, including the, you know, they killed the Israeli, the IDF killed four uh, Egyptian soldiers in Egypt uh, over the weekend. And that may very well be uh, a tripwire. I mean, the Arab populations of those countries, not the Arab leadership, but the Arab populations of those countries is totally uh, fed up with what they see in Gaza. And the pressure on the leadership to do something about it is extraordinary and perhaps irresistible. That's what McGovern, uh, McGregor has been saying. Wow. Yeah, so everybody, go. you got to see what the judges guess. There, there's nothing like it. Judge, thanks so much for being here. And again, you go to Judging Freedom, and the judge is a man of freedom. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Gerald. All the best to you.